from insanely awkward conversations unearthing chilling details about a character's activities away from home, to a celebration being swiftly followed by a spot of human dinner. These movies all no doubt led to some pretty uncomfortable moments down the road. I'm Gareth from WhatCulture.com and here are 10 more awkward moments that must have happened after famous movies. Number 10. The kids survive the park, but the divorce is still coming. Jurassic World As the long-awaited return to all things Jurassic Park, or in this case, World, reached its exhilarating conclusion, luckily the two sprogs that we'd been following for much of the dino chaos had survived to flee from pterodactyls another day. However, once the dust had settled on this apparent happy ending, equipped with the two Mitchell lads both being safely retrieved by their parents, one rather depressing fact soon sank in for those actually invested in their backstories. It's mentioned during the flick that the boy's parents are in the midst of getting divorced. Despite the fact that their mum and dad appear to be comforting each other as they arrive to take their children as far away from Isla Nubar as possible at the end, there's still no sign of their divorce being off the cards. Sure, they've just survived being hunted by prehistoric monsters, but that won't save them from some deeply uncomfortable and rather crappy days ahead, as Grey in particular struggles to adapt to this new scenario. Number 9. Cage has to explain their relationship to Rita, Edge of Tomorrow Throughout the unexpectedly awesome sci-fi hit that was Doug Lehman's Edge of Tomorrow, Tom Cruise's Major William Cage routinely finds himself returning to a distinct moment in time, after being killed by aliens. It's later revealed that, spoiler, Emily Blunt's Rita Vrataski once shared this ability too, opening the door for the decorated soldier to train the useless vessel for the ultimate mission. Ultimately, Cage is successful in besting the big bad alien foes. However, this victory came at a price. He's no longer able to loop back in time upon being dispatched, and Rita, having not trained Cage, experienced the triumphant moments leading up to him saving the world with no clue as to who this dude even is. It may have resulted in a humorous closing line as Rita wondered what this smiling idiot wanted with her, but the moments that followed would have likely been filled with a loved-up Cage trying to convince a person with absolutely no memory of a crackling relationship that they were well on their way to falling in love. Better him than me. Number 8. Jason reveals the truth about his mother, us. As far as closing zingers go, Jordan Peele's Us may just have delivered one of the finest in modern movie history, as his doppelganger horror feature rode off into the sunset. In the wake of a mesmerizing duel between Adelaide and her underworld-dwelling counterpart, Red, the former manages to best her enemy and link back up with her traumatized family to drive away from the carnage. Yet all isn't as it appears. Jason, Adelaide's youngest, had been present for his mother's murderous victory in the underground facility, and clearly sensed something was up from the minute she brutally snapped Red's neck. Judging from his concerned look as Adelaide drove on, Jason seemed to realize that the woman he was sat next to was in fact Red all along, with the OG surface Adelaide being swapped out in the funhouse all those years ago. Sure, she's still technically his mother, but you can bet it won't be long before the type decides to spill this secret to the family. And then what? Despite the fact the Wilsons managed to dramatically stave off the tethered for much of the flick, their most difficult and dangerous dilemma to come is likely sat in the driver's seat. Number 7. Himmler Gains Control in Glorious Bastards during Quentin Tarantino's alternate telling of two attempts to assassinate Germany's leaders during World War II, Shoshana Dreyfus is eventually successful in her quest to incinerate much of the Nazi leadership, watching a propaganda film in her cinema. Yet, though Hitler, Goring, and Bormann were all sent to the grave during this moment, Dreyfus and those executing Operation Kino wouldn't have actually wiped away the party's leaders all in one go here, as a character who wasn't actually seen on screen over the course of the flick would have likely been in line to take up control of the Nazis going forward, his name being Heinrich Himmler. However, the surely inevitable appointment of Himmler likely would have gone down like a lead balloon with the German public, as he wasn't exactly what you'd call a popular figure. Himmler was seen as arguably a far worse piece of work than Hitler, which makes the reports that if he had been promoted to Supreme Chancellor in the wake of Hitler's death, many Weimar generals would have attempted to take him out en route to negotiating their surrender to the US somewhat understandable. Thankfully, it looks like the war would have been ended either way, but not before a rather unwanted Himmler detour. Number 6. Jane and Ricky Go to Prison, American Beauty 
While Sam Mendes' American Beauty can make for a difficult watch through a 2021 lens for a multitude of reasons, it still comes equipped with one of the most shocking endings of its time. The sight of Kevin Spacey's Lester Burnham having his brains blown out before he's discovered by his daughter Jane and her partner Ricky. However, instead of the feature ending on a monologue delivered by the recently murdered Lester, the original script, written by Alan Ball, revealed that things took another turn in the wake of his demise. This version of the project would have seen Jane and Ricky being sent to prison shortly after discovering Lester's body, with Ricky's father Frank framing the two for his murder. Their high-profile trial and a number of other elements from this original script were all filmed, but Mendez ultimately decided to trim them from the feature in the end. Ball would later admit that the feature worked much better without these later occurrences, but it doesn't change the fact that some time in the slammer for a crime they did not commit was incoming for these unfortunate teens. Number 5. Clint's Murderous Gap Years – Avengers Endgame Perhaps one of the most tragic arcs that unfolded over the course of Avengers Endgame saw Clint Barton dealing with the unexpected dusting of his entire family by going on a murderous killing spree for five years. Said quest for vengeance did see the now Ronan take out numerous criminals, but he did so with a newfound thirst for blood as he grieved for his loved ones. Thankfully, Natasha Romanoff would help bring him back towards the light not long after Hawkeye had massacred some Yakuza in Tokyo, and Barton would even have a part to play in bringing his family and the rest of the dusted population back to the universe. However, that latter development came with some unforeseen issues. With Barton now reacquainted with his wife and kids, you have to imagine that the topic of what he did during their time away came up during a family barbecue. The unsettling answer would likely lead to more than a few awkward silences before Barton asked if anyone wanted some mayo on their hot dog. Number 4. Elliot Ness's career hits the skids, the untouchables Brian De Palma's The Untouchables tells the story of how Elliot Ness and his team helped put Al Capone behind bars during Prohibition. The film ends on a relatively positive note, with Ness packing up his office before deciding to go have a drink upon hearing the news of the probable repeal of Prohibition. However, life was anything but rosy for the special agent in the wake of Capone's imprisonment. Ness would actually go on to investigate the infamous Cleveland Torso murderer, known for killing 12 to 20 different people over three years, each by decapitation or dismemberment. He even wound up having the remains of two victims placed in front of his city hall office as the murderer targeted the lead investigator. In a desperate and reckless attempt to stifle the murderous criminal, Ness would then order the burning of the Kingsbury Run shantytown that the killer was using as their hunting grounds in 1938. The murders stopped, sure, but Ness was soon understandably turned on by the public. He'd never fully recover from that decision and eventually retired with little fanfare, only recovering his status as a hero upon the release of his autobiography three years after his death in 1957. Number 3. Ewoks Chow Down on Some Stormtroopers – Return of the Jedi With the Empire well and truly obliterated, for a bit at least, George Lucas's Return of the Jedi plays out to the sound of every child's new best friend, or worst nightmare depending on who you ask, serenading our heroes as they enjoy a celebratory feast on the moon of Endor. However, once you get past the joy and glee shared by the rebels and their new furry companions, a rather harrowing truth begins to rear its head. As we witnessed earlier in the film, the Ewoks aren't a race known for thinking twice when it comes to cooking up whichever unwanted guests come for a wander around their forest. So this means that in the wake of the film's epic final battle amongst the trees, the Endor natives would have more than likely opted for a spot of Stormtrooper stir-fry to ring in the new era of peace across the galaxy. You can therefore bet that the mood would have turned a little bit awkward upon Luke, Han, and Leia being offered some rather familiar-looking nibbles as the celebrations wore on. Number 2. Now What? The Graduate You could not have wished for a happier ending, could you? Just when it looked like Dustin Hoffman's Benjamin Braddock had lost out on his chance to steal Catherine Ross's Elaine Robinson away at the altar, the two managed to break free from the ceremony and run away together thanks to a perfectly timed bus. Yet as the two lovebirds finally have a chance to catch their breath, the cold, hard reality of their shocking decision begins to set in. Hilariously, this visual of the pair clearly being overwhelmed by their choice was captured by complete accident, with the film's editor directing this shot and completely forgetting to call cut earlier. Needless to say, had they continued to shoot the subsequent scenes involving the two, there's every chance the pair would have had to have a no-doubt difficult conversation about what in the hell they're gonna do. 
Now they've catastrophically burned the bridge between them and Elaine's family. At least it was exciting though, right? Number one, Tommy gets arrested, warrior. Though it's largely played out under the banner of a mixed martial arts tournament, 2011's Warrior is mostly a story about two separated brothers and their journey back together again. Yet another key element weaved into this often hard-hitting affair comes in the form of Tommy's military history. It's revealed as the Sparta contest unfolds that Tommy actually saved the life of a fellow Marine in Iraq. However, said former colleague singing his praises leads to the military dusting off his file and discovering that he'd actually deserted shortly after his whole unit was killed in a friendly fire bombing incident. It's confirmed that the savage fighter with a sensitive soul will be carted off to custody whatever the result of his climactic brawl with his bro in the film's conclusion. So, despite the fact he'd saved a life and had pledged to give his winnings to the widow of one of his fallen mates, Tommy was still heading for some time in handcuffs, win or lose. With that being said, here's hoping his prior heroic actions helped lead to a shortened sentence for the tormented younger Conlon, on the back of finally dramatically reconciling with his big bro.